Hello class, this is Mr. Hart. In this podcast, we want to continue our unit on pressure and fluids and talk about atmospheric pressure. Now, this is one of my favorite lessons to teach because I think it's a super interesting topic and there's a lot of cool things that come from atmospheric pressure. But before we start talking about that, we need to understand a key idea with fluids. And this idea is what's known as Pascal's principle. Okay, And you may have known this already intuitively. But basically, it just states that a fluid exerts pressure in all directions, okay? And they always act perpendicular to a surface. So all that means is if you put an object in water, for example, the water will push in on the object from every direction, not just from the bottom and the top, not just from the sides, just anywhere it can see a surface, it will push in on it, okay? That, that pressure that comes from the fluid is universal. It goes all around the object. So it seems like a simple idea, but it's going to be very important for some of the things we talk about. Okay, So let's think about the atmosphere for a minute, Okay, and atmospheric pressure. Now, you probably know that the air is a little bit thinner up here in Utah. Okay, We're higher up at altitude. The air isn't quite as thick as, say, down in California, Okay, near the sea level. And so we have differences in air pressures. Okay. Now, usually, day to day, that's not a big deal, but we see some interesting phenomenon occur when we bring things from California to Utah and vice versa, okay, from these higher elevations to these lower elevations. So, for example, let's look at this water bottle. Now, if you took a water bottle from Utah down to California, you would see something like this. It would start to crumple on the sides and compress in a little bit. Well, why is that, okay? Well, it has to do with how the air pressure works in the system. Okay. In Utah, we have thinner air. So let's say this water bottle was closed when it was in Utah. The air pressure would be a lot lower on the inside. Okay. So I'm going to represent that with an L to mean low Okay. on the inside of the water bottle. Down in California near sea level, the air is a lot thicker, so there will be high air pressure on the outside of the water bottle. Okay. So another key idea is pressures always flow from high to low. Well, there's low pressure inside the water bottle. There's high pressures on the outside, so those are going to push in on the water bottle, which is why we see this crumpling effect occur. Okay. Now, I don't know if this picture actually was taken with that in mind, but you would see a similar phenomenon occur. Okay. High pressures push in on low pressures, which is why you would see a crumpling effect. Okay. Let me give you another example to think about. You've probably seen this one before, especially in Utah. Uh, have you ever bought a bag of chips and it's filled with a lot of air, nice and like puffy and round? Okay, you get this nice bag of chips and then you open it and there's like hardly anything in there. Okay, I used to always think that that was just because the company's trying to cheat me out of my money or something, which they might still be, but it's not their fault that the bag fills up with air like that. Okay, it has to do with our elevation. So if you have a bag of chips, for example, it's packaged, if it's a Lay's bag of chips, Lay's factory is down in Plano, Texas. So near sea level, you're going to have a high pressure on the inside of the bag. Okay, You bring that bag of chips up here to Utah elevation, well, we have a lower pressure up here. So what's going to happen? High pressures always flow to low pressures, so that's going to push on the outside of the bag trying to get to the low pressure. So what does that do? It expands the air inside the bag, which makes it kind of that nice round shape, okay? Because simply of the differences in air pressures, okay? So that's why that occurs. And you see it all the time in grocery stores. The bags are nice and filled with air. The opposite would occur if you took that bag down to Plano, Texas, right? If you had a nice fold of air, it'd go back down and it'd be deflated because there'd be more air pressure, okay? So, um, Let's talk about elevations for a second. Okay, Elevation has a lot to do with air pressure simply because of how much air is pushing down on the object. Okay, If you're at sea level, you have a lot of air particles because of gra gravity pushing them down. Right, The higher up you go, there's less air particles because they've been kind of pushed down to the lower levels of the atmosphere. Okay, And so it's just a gravity effect going on. And then you can say atmospheric pressure is basically how much air is sitting above you. Okay, you could draw like a big column of air above you and say, oh, okay, the air pressure is really strong here because of all the air above me. Okay. 
So let's look at some other things that can happen with high and low pressures, okay? Let's watch this video. This video actually comes from me when I was first teaching, my first year at a little academy I used to teach at. You ready? This is intense. Oh my God. Whoa! Oh my gosh! What? I don't. Okay. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. So as you saw, by boiling the water inside the can and then turning it over quickly into the cold water, the can collapsed. Well, why does that occur? So I start with boiling the water inside the can. The steam initially has a very high pressure. Okay, inside the can, it's boiling water. Steam has a high pressure. But if I turn it around upside down and seal it with the water, right, that steam will cool down. And cold steam has a low pressure, or cold air in general, right? But because it was sealed by the water, it can't get any more air in, so it stays at a low pressure. So what happens? The high pressure around the can pushes in on it because it's now a low pressure and causes that can to collapse, right, from the pressure on the outside. Okay, so we can make this occur, okay? Again, that's a very common thing to do is to make steam or something that's initially high pressure and then seal it, cool it down, and then you have a low pressure, okay? Um, there's a very good video that um, Veritasium does, Derek Mueller does, uh, showing if you can take even like a steel drum, something ginormous and made of steel, if you boil it, put steam, and then cool it down rapidly, you can still make it implode like this, collapse on itself. So I recommend going to this link and watching that. It's really well done and it's really cool to watch. Okay. Um, other applications of this, if you ever go into the rail car cleaning business, which I don't know if you ever will, but if you ever do, uh, never seal off the door of the car when you're cleaning. Okay. So what they'll do is they'll take these high pressure heat cleaners, this, these hoses that they'll just spray down the entire cars, go down the inside, Okay, do these pressure cleans around the entire vehicle. And when they do that, they make sure not to close off the door because if they do, you get the exact same effect. You have all this steam and high pressure uh, air inside. It cools down and it suddenly becomes a low pressure. So if that's the case, you can make an entire rail car collapse, which is just crazy. I mean, this stuff's made out of like iron. It's incredible what air pressure can do, how much it can collapse things like this. Okay, so. Where to the wise, always leave the doors open if you're cleaning something with a high pressure cleaner, okay? Um, let's think about some other examples. A very common thing people like to do at restaurants, which you've probably done before, to be honest, right, is you take a glass of water, okay, or your drink, and you put your straw inside the drink, and then you put your thumb over the top, right, or your finger over the top, okay? When you do that, it seals off the straw, okay? So it has the water pressure down here, okay? You have a somewhat lower pressure inside the straw just because you put it in the water. Then when you take the straw out, okay, and you leave your thumb over the top, you still have that low pressure inside the straw. So what happens? You have high pressure from the outside pushing in on the straw, and it keeps the liquid that's in there inside the straw, okay? It creates kind of this vacuum effect, and you can seal it off and get water or whatever drink to stay inside the straw because you made a low pressure, okay? So everyone's done that. If you haven't, go do it right now, okay? Use a straw, just put in some water, and put your finger over the top, and it will keep the water inside of there, okay? But it just has to do with high and low pressure, okay? So lots of interesting things we can get just simply because of this effect that high pressures flow towards low pressures, okay? Um, let's talk about a little bit more of a weather phenomenon with atmospheric pressure, okay? One thing to keep in mind is how much atmospheric pressure is there generally, okay? And at sea level, okay, our units of air pressure is what we call an atmosphere, okay? So they took the air pressure at uh, sea level, and they said, how much kilopascals is that? And it's 101.3, okay? So we'll call that one atmosphere because that's the atmospheric pressure at sea level, okay? So when you see weather reports, usually they measure it in terms of atmospheres and stuff like that. It's a common unit, but it's 101.3 kilopascals. Now, keep in mind, 
That's a lot of pressure. Remember our definition of pressure is force per area. So that means there's, you know, 101.3 thousand newtons of force for every square meter. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, it turns out to be around 14 pounds per square inch. So if you drew a square inch on your arm, for example, okay, not very big, the air pressure on your arm at that point is 14 pounds worth of force. Okay, that's crazy. Every square inch of your body has 14 pounds of force on it. So why don't you collapse immediately under all this weight? Well, the key is that you have air going through your body, you have water, and it pushes out as much as the other stuff pushes in. But keep in mind, that's a crazy amount of force that's being applied. Okay, which is why we can see things like steel drums when they remove all the inside air, they just collapse immediately from all this force. Okay, so it's kind of crazy how much pressure we do have from the air above us. Okay, one last thing just to keep in mind, um, you should know how we measure air pressure. Um, and it's, we'll use what's called a barometer. Okay, and what it does is similar to the straw experiment, is they put this vacuum inside of this tube. And they used to use mercury. Uh, now they obviously don't do that because mercury is known to be poisonous and all these terrible things. Okay, so they use, used to use mercury and they make this vacuum and based on how high the mercury goes up the tube, we can determine how much air must be pushing down on the mercury. Okay, so it is a well-designed apparatus where they kind of mark off how much atmospheric pressure must be for every length or height of the mercury. And so they do this right and they calibrate it so they can figure out how much air pressure we have. Okay, so really cool stuff, really powerful. Um, it's amazing. There's, I, I haven't even gone into all the different examples there are of cool things that happen with atmospheric pressure and things like that. But just realize that it's constantly pushing and there's some amazing things we can do with this uh, air pressure. But uh, go ahead and uh, do the homework. Hopefully this all made sense. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.